So we pretty much already covered these, but I just want to reiterate um, and go over one more time the build and extract workflows because they're very powerful and um, very much designed around the UCS. So we've seen quite a few examples of them already, but I do just want to sort of show one last time sort of what they can do. So I have my empty database here and uh, I'm going to add some files back in. And these are files that I know have the proper um, UCS file name and I'm have no metadata in these files whatsoever aside from what the file name offers. So I'm going to call back up the workflows and I'm going to come down here to extract. So again, the first of these two workflows is the one that can extract information out of the file name. So let's just again very quickly walk through the sort of options here. You can tell the source field, again, it's almost always going to be the file name, but if a vendor had sent you, for example, a UCS file name stored somewhere else, and you wanted to try and extract this same information out of it, you simply could point to that other field. So wherever it happened to be stored, you could point to it. In this case, we'll use the file name. These file names, because I intentionally built them, to have them have examples of both user categories and vendor categories. So I want to leave these checked. If I knew that there was no user category in this, if these came from an actual vendor, they're not supposed to use the user category, so I could probably leave that off. If they were your own files, you probably aren't using the vendor category, so you probably could leave that off. In this case, we'll leave it on. It shouldn't hurt anything to leave these on. Even if there's nothing uh, represented in those, it shouldn't crash or something. It should still work. Again, take the middle chunk, which we know according to the rules of the file name is the what's going to become the effects name, and simply decide what to do. I, I can either uppercase it or just leave it as is. So we'll just leave it as is. So the third chunk of the file, the creator ID, which in this case are my initials, decide what to do with that. So uh, let's take it and put it into the designer field instead of the manufacturer. Those are my two options. I can put it in manufacturer or designer. Source ID, which in this case is none again. We can decide what to do with that. This could become either a show or a library. So in this case, I'll put it to show. And user data, there is no user data on this, so I'm simply going to ignore it. This you could simply assign to any category that you can see here. These are all the categories available. So if a vendor had sent you the microphone information there, great. You could steal it and put it into microphone. If you determined by looking at the file name that it was actually a location, great, put it there. If it was something else, probably a good place to just put it is into notes. And then from there, you could determine what it is and how useful it is. And you could simply copy it from notes to somewhere else or just delete it or whatever. So selecting all, hitting run very quickly. I'll move the, out of the way you'll see again the power of what this workflow can do. It's extracted all this information out. It's matched my initials to the lookup table, and it's filled that in as Tim Nielsen. And so it's filled all these pieces of information. Now from there, I could simply start manipulating this metadata more if I wanted to make changes, if I wanted to change something in the effects name or something else, or I could recategorize something, all this kind of stuff. And again, now let's just um, do something a little drastic, but we simply take this and we're going to build a new file name so, so i'm going to say set the field file name to test and i'm going to basically append numbers like this to the file name so we're going to basically blow away our file names but we still have all this metadata so now i can come back and we'll look at the second of those two which is the build so again let's use the categories vendor category and user category because we do have some information there in this case, the effects name is already title cased. So, but let's just show off how it would work. I could say title case it and remove the spaces. So very few people probably want the spaces missing, but some of us like to work that way. So it's an option. Creator ID again is the designer because that's what I have available. The source is the show, which is going to be none. And there is no user data and we're going to build the file name. So as soon as I hit run, you'll see that it's basically done the reverse. This time it's truncated out the spaces and created this. And this is my preferred file name. Sort of might bother some of you, but this is the way I like to see things in my library and the way I'm used to seeing them. So uh, there you go. So again, these two workflows, build and extract, are super powerful. Just FYI, if you actually just click this button here, it will actually take you to the home page if you wanted to sort of explore more options. Kind of clever. And so the combination of this build and extract workflow enable you to pretty much sculpt and steal metadata in and out of UCS file names. So these are the most powerful workflows available to sort of do that. And uh, just wanted to sort of recap those really quickly here. And so there we go. And uh, next we're going to look at the ability to upload metadata.